We've been doing a lot with graphing and graph shapes, so we're going to continue to do that. And it's very important to us. It's a really, it's a really good way uh, to build equations that we can use to define and predict motion. So we're looking at getting relationships from graphs. Now, the world is very, very, very easy when we have a linear relationship. When it's linear, we have a straight line on the graph, Let's say we graphed C versus D in this case. We have a slope. We'll say it's equal to M. Our intercept's equal to B. And we know the basic form of this, because it's a straight line, is Y equals MX plus B. Well, in this case, all of my Ys are C, whatever that value C is. And then I have my slope times D plus B. And because it's a straight line, I can instantly jump to the relationship between what's on my vertical axis and what's on my horizontal axis. Right away I can do that because it's, it's a straight line. I love, love linear graphs. Things get a little tricky when our graphs cease to be linear. So the first one that we're going to look at uh, looks like that. We're going to graph A versus B and we see this shape. That is not linear. Hopefully we can all identify that that is not Linear. Now, looking back on what we know, that looks like a half of a parabola. When it's parabolic, we know that A is proportional to B squared. And that little funky symbol means is proportional to. So this graph shows me that I, I'm plotting A versus B squared. Uh, I don't know exactly what that equation looks like. It could, it could have multiple terms. I'm not sure. I just know that A is somehow proportional to B squared. So what I want to do, instead of trying to figure out everything that fits into the quadratic formula that determines that graph, what I want to do is, is plot the values that gave me this graph in such a way that I have a straight line. And to do that, I'm going to graph A and then B squared. So that means I'm going to take all of the values for B in my table and square them. And when I do that, I'm going to graph it. So I'm going to leave all the A's the same, but I'm going to square all of the B's in my table. And I'll start giving you, and you'll start making tables with multiple columns so that you can figure this out. So we have A and B. When we do that, when we graph A and B squared, we get a straight line. Now, we're not doing this just so we can get a straight line. We're doing this because equations are very easy to get from straight lines. So we can easily find the slope of a straight line, which tells me the relationship not between A and B, but between A and B squared. It's a straight line, so we know it has the form Y equals MX, but my Ys for this straight line graph are A's, we have a slope, and my x's are b squared. So it's telling me how a is proportional to b squared. It's a very quick, very simple way to get the relationship between uh, things that are not linear. You're just going to take and square that value on the graph. Now you'll have a data table, so you're going to square things in the data table and graph it to make it a straight line. This is a super important skill and, and something that's going to come up quite a bit. Now, we call this linearization. We have linearized the graph of A and B. And we've figured out the relationship between A and B. But they're not always going to be just like that. So let's look at a second example, and then we'll just talk briefly about some more. In this example, let's say we have T and L, and we get this shape. Now, you may not know what this shape is, but it kind of looks like a parabola on its side. When a parabola opens that way, we know that we have Y proportional to the square root of X. So, obviously, this is not linear. That's the biggest issue. When things aren't linear, we start squaring things just to kind of figure out what happened, what's happening. That's our best bet. That's usually our best bet to figure out the relationship. Now, in this case, we have t proportional to the square root of l. This is a square root graph. Now, things get really nice when you can 
recognize the graph shape. Then there's a lot less guess and check, and you can jump to what you have to do right away. There will be some guess and check. And, and we'll talk about a little bit about harder graph shapes. I'm not going to show you any pictures of that. So here we have t versus, this is t is proportional to the square root of l, and we can tell from that curve. But I want to be able to find the slope so that I can get exactly how proportional they are. I don't love taking square roots, so what we're going to do is graph t squared versus l. So in our table, whatever gave us this graph of t versus l, we're going to take all of those t's and square them. Then we're going to plot that on the y-axis, and then we're just going to put l regularly on the x-axis. And when we do it, it's going to give us a straight line. And that straight line tells me that t squared is equal to whatever the slope is times l. And we've linearized this graph as well. That's really all there is to linearization. We're taking a graph that is not a straight line, and we're going to square, square root, invert, take the log of the axes, the values on our axes, until we get a straight line. Because once we have a straight line, and once we know what we've done to each one of the axes, we can start putting numbers with that relationship and build out uh, an equation that tells us really what's going on you're going to have an opportunity to do this tomorrow. I'm not going to tell you what you're going to have to do, but you will have to linearize in some way. But your graph may look like it's quadratic. It may look like it's a square root graph. It may look like a 1 over x graph. It may look like a logarithmic graph. I'm just playing. We're not going to do logarithmic graphs. It may look like a sinusoidal graph. You don't know. So you're going to try some things. But if it looks familiar, then you can move in that direction. And that's what we're after. 